Souls Collectors and welcome to another Boss Bounty video and welcome to episode 213 of Ask Boss Bounty. If you are new to the channel, this is a weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday. I take your questions from the comment section below and do my best to answer them. So if you do have a question for next week's episode and you want to be featured in the video, be sure to leave that question in the comment section of this video. If you happen to enjoy the video, hit the like button down below, subscribe if you are new and I just want to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members for supporting the channel. And with all that being said, let's get on to the first question. QMighty54 says, hey boss, cheers, question for next week. When TVC ever makes it that far, who do you think they'll choose for VC1000? I think it'd be neat to have it as a celebration of the history of the line with something like a remake of Dengar or a new Starkiller VC01 and VC100, or maybe the maker himself, an all new unique George Lucas figure or maybe something Star Wars adjacent like Indiana Jones? Or is VC-1000 what they're saving Farm Boy Luke for? Who would you like to see for that milestone? Well, I mean, I've got to say, it would be amazing if Vintage Collection did actually get to VC-1000. That That is kind of a long way off. That's at least, what, maybe six or seven years away if they continue with the amount of figures that they're bringing out each year. I've got to say, if they ever did get to VC-1000, I think it'd have to be something like George Lucas or maybe a figure based on Mark Boudreaux, one of the you know classic designers that have been there from the very start, something like that, because I don't think like a Dengar or a Starkiller would really cut it, in my opinion. Um, and also, I don't think you're going to have to wait until VC-1000 for Dengar or Luke Farmboy or anyone like that. I'm pretty sure they'll come out way before then. Kim1 says, are there any OT characters that you'd like to see in Andor Season 2? Personally, I'd go for Theron Net so we can finally get a figure released. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to go for something a bit more, I don't know, conventional maybe. I think Wolf Yularin did turn up in Season 1. I would like to see more of him in Season 2 and then we get a figure of him uh, in the Vintage Collection. I think the card back would look great. I would want it based on his uh, A New Hope appearance though. And also, I would like to see if they could get Grand Moff Tarkin in there again. You know, right at the end of the series, it's supposed to go right up to Rogue One. So maybe they could revisit that whole deep fake thing and really improve on what they did for Grand Moff Tarkin. Because although I thought it was pretty good what they did in Rogue One with Grand Moff Tarkin, I think they could do it better now with today's technology. They could really, really nail that down. And then, of course, that's a great excuse for them to update the figure that we've got here. This one's got a terrible skirt and he's green. We've already got the officer sculpt. Grand Moff Tarkin is, you know, there to be made basically, but they kind of need a reason to do it. And that would be a good reason. Connor says, question for next week. With your new collection room and having more space, would you ever consider getting a hot toy, especially if they ever made a Bosk? Well, to be honest, I think the only hot toy that I would ever get would be a Bosk, I think. Um, I don't have the space for them, even though I've got a new collection room. I don't have the space for Hot Toys. They're, you know, they're far too big. Those figures, they look great. Do not get me wrong, but if they ever did bring out a Bosk one, I know there is a Sideshow one from a few years back, isn't it? It's very expensive on the secondary market. But if they ever did an updated Hot Toys Bosk, then 100%, I'd have to get that for my collection. But I, I feel that's probably the only one that I'd ever get. Russell Banks says, question for next week. I know we've passed the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary year, but what do you think the chances are of getting a TVC A-Wing and pilot? It seems the N1 was successful and we're getting the E-Wing and hopefully new pilot to fly it. So the scale seems a popular one with Hasbro at present. It would give us an OT ship that they could also potentially reuse and tick another figure off the 96 list. Yeah, we, we definitely need the A-Wing pilot in the... Uh, you know, to complete the 96, as it were. And I'm sure there's lots of other people out there that would like an A-Wing in the line. They have done plenty of others before. Could they still use that mould and give it, like, the TVC paint apps treatment and, and bring it up to, sort of, TVC standards? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if that ship's, I don't know, dare I say it, a little bit too basic, but maybe they can. Um, I'd be up for it. I would like the A-Wing. I think maybe we have may have missed that window of opportunity with the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary passing us by. But you never know what's going to happen in the future. So I, I definitely wouldn't count it out. But I think the chances have lessened now we're past that uh, anniversary. P Diddy 82 says, Hey boss, question for next week. Four packs. Would you rather a four pack of world building aliens, same species but different body career types, i.e. all calamari but one pilot, one officer, etc. 
or a four pack of four different alien species but all the same body type maybe different colors i.e all rebel pilots but one calamari and one tesec etc cheers yeah I, I was trying to think of what i would prefer on this one and I, I honestly i think there's a third choice here and to me i would like things that are in the movies and tv shows i, I don't really want things created just for the sake of creating them like you know here's a bunch of um pilots with all different alien heads if they haven't been on screen i'm not really too sure i'd want them personally but i know there's a lot of people out there that you know like the expanded universe and things like that that would like that so a good example would be um the pirate gang in the mando right there was three or four different aliens there there was like a, a nikto and things like that that's the kind of thing that i'd like to see them do but of course those pirates have all got slightly different outfits haven't they some of them have got long coats and things like that so they're all they're all quite different so it wouldn't work so yeah that's that's kind of what i want really it's just what's on screen what i see um with the limited amount of figures that they put out each year that's that's kind of what i want channel member shannon Potrat says hey boss happy sunday question for next week with hasbro now releasing the e-wing helping expand the roster of tvc vehicles in the line that we've never had before What's your number one dream vehicle that you'd love to have in TVC that we'll probably never see? My number one was the Rogue Shadow from The Force Unleashed until the Andor series, and we got Luthen Rail's Fondor Hallcraft. Yeah, I think for me it's got to be uh, Luthen's ship. I don't think we'll ever get that, but I, I really do wish we would. It, it's an amazing design, it looks great. Um, it just looked great in the show, and I would love that to be a vehicle in TVC. Apart from that, maybe um, the U-Wing. I don't, I can't see them doing the U-Wing. I think it's too big. It'd have to be a HasLab now, I think, because the one that we got in the sort of movie line, if you like, is is vastly underscaled. It's it's nowhere near big enough. Um, but it's a, a really cool ship that I would like in, in my collection of TVC. So there's a couple for you. Number one vehicle that we have had before that desperately needs doing, for me, is, is, is Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Jeffrey Horner says, question for next week. What are you wanting for the X-Wing Pilot 4-pack? Also, did you notice that they used a photo from Hoth? So is it a regular X-Wing uniform or a Hoth one? Thanks again. Yeah, this was really strange. So this was a pipeline that they announced on the uh, most recent Hasbro Pulse live stream. And that's why I've got this sort of group of pilots here for you. So the image that they used was of Hoth. And the majority of pilots in that image were snowspeeder pilots. And you'll see here, this is Dak Ralter or Walter. His outfit is different to the X-Wing pilots. I think this guy back here is a Y-Wing pilot, actually. Is, is that Dutch? I don't know. I just grabbed a load of pilots. But you've got, you've got Biggs there and you've got Luke there. Their outfits are different to the snowspeeder outfit. You can see the gloves are obviously a different color. They've got different boots. The tunic is slightly different. This one has a bit that comes down underneath the waist and it also has that bit around the neck, which the X-Wing pilots do not have. So when it was announced as an X-Wing pilot four pack, I was quite surprised with the, the image that they used, to be honest. So it is a little bit confusing. And what would I like? Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit funny because I think we need to be a little bit careful about how we say things to Hasbro and tell them what we want and things like that. Because if you're looking at that Night Trooper four pack, right, with the Enoch packed in, everyone moaned about that saying, you know, Enoch needed to be on a card. Those four packs need to be army builders. You shouldn't be putting named characters in them, all that kind of thing. But with the Rebel X-Wing pilots, I think Emily described them as grunts. And like I said on the previous question about those aliens, you know, I, I want characters that are on, on screen and I don't really want um, four grunt X-Wing pilots that haven't got a name. Like, I want the ones that are in A New Hope that attack the Death Star. You know, even if they're like on screen for 10 seconds, they've still got a name. And there's Theron Net, I think is one of them, for example, you know, um, Porkins, Biggs. Wedge, you know, there's loads of them. So yeah, so we need to be a little bit careful because as I say, with those army builder four packs, I don't want named characters in there. But when it comes to rebel X-Wing pilots, I do want named characters. And in my opinion, they should be a four pack of carded figures. And this is where it gets a little bit funny. So I'm, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what they do with that X-Wing pilot four pack. 
Um, I just hope people aren't disappointed basically with what they end up doing. We'll have to wait and see. Machine 230677 says, if you were starting to collect TVC from scratch and wanted to collect all the figures, what would be your plan of attack? So yeah, I've had this question a couple of times before, but I thought I'd address it again in this video uh, for anybody that missed it previously. So if I wanted to collect all of the figures, now this is different, you see, because if you are not a completionist, then that changes the approach, I think, because then you could like pick and choose. But if you wanted to get all of the figures, the end goal is to get every single one, then I personally would start on the ones that are never going to be reissued. And now I made a video about this a while ago that I stated ones that I felt are safe from reissue and it's like older clones and, and things like that. And in fact, with the new clone body, that amount of figures has probably risen. I even included Grand Moff Tarkin because I don't believe that figure there will ever be released on that card back. They might release that card back again like they've done with the Darth Vader card back recently, but the figure they put in it will be an updated Tarkin with the new officer body, right? So this thing as a package will never be reissued in my opinion. So. I personally would go and get those first because they're the ones that are going to be going up in value and they're going to be the ones that are going to be tough to find. Um, or everything from TVC 2.0 you should be able to get pretty much around retail price. There's a couple in there that you want to be careful of. But, you know, Hasbro will probably reissue some of those at some point anyway. But uh, that's where I'd start. I'd look at the ones that are never going to be reissued, basically. Star Wars Bomb says, the Acolyte trailer just released. So many Jedi. This could be when Hasbro makes an all new Jedi sculpt, paving the way for PT era Jedi to get done or redone. Question for next week. After seeing the trailer, what are you most excited for and what characters look like they will make great TVC figures? I think you might have asked this question before the reveals because we have had two acolyte reveals we've had the assassin the, you know may the bad girl and we've also had one of the jedis and looking at that jedi i think it could be reused for uh prequel era jedis i think there's probably some more to come as well if you look at the black series they got five figures i believe and all of them are good guys apart from that assassin that we got in tvc what did I like most about the trailer or what am I most excited for? You know, I want to reserve judgment on that because I want to see the series a little bit first because Disney have let me down a little bit on, you know, me getting excited about something that's coming out and then it, it not really delivering on all levels. But, you know, it looked pretty good. It was action packed. I did like the look of the Wookiee Jedi. He looked cool. And he would be a great TVC figure if they were, if they were to do that. Star Wars Nerd says, hey boss, question for next week. What are the chances of seeing Revenge of the Sith Nuke Gunray next year in the vintage collection for the 20th anniversary of Revenge of the Sith? Since he was in the top 64 for March Madness, he has not had a figure in over 21 years and we never had him in his Revenge of the Sith outfit. Thank you and I appreciate all the work you do for the community. Yeah, I think even though he got on the bracket of 64, I, I think it's pretty unlikely that we'll get a new Gunray in um, the 20th anniversary next year, basically. I think, you know, it's, it'll be an all-new sculpt. I'm not saying this, but I think Hasbro may feel that a, a, an all-new sculpt budget would be better served elsewhere basically that's how i feel they're thinking on that matter but you know new gun ray is something i would like to see in tvc just like many other people as well of course he got onto the bracket of 64 so he must have had some backing but yeah i'm pretty sure he got knocked out pretty early anyway though didn't he afetc says great video boss what's your opinion on play sets do you think hasbro should release more of them in the tvc line such as the geonosis arena death star space station ewok village etc i've got to say i love the play sets in tvc um i have three or four of them on display in my loose collection it's made me display my loose collection basically because i was getting a little bit bored of just having figures on a shelf i think that's more a tone to black series these play sets is what the world building is all about so for example i've got the tanty 4 play set on display i've got both jabber's palaces i even have the carbon freezing chamber because that allows for loads of figures to be displayed and then you've got the endor bunker as well fantastic i think they're great i think they're needed and i think it's a great way of displaying all of your figures in a in a cool setting uh, some of the ones that you mentioned there ewok village would be brilliant geonosis arena would be brilliant Mr. Django there would definitely enjoy that. 
Um, a Death Star space station, I think that would probably be a HasLab if they were to ever do that. It'd have to be a HasLab. I feel it'd be far too big otherwise. They could do miniature, you know, scenes of the Death Star, but not all one big Death Star. G.I. Joe Review Podcast says, question for next week. I desperately want The Bad Batch in TVC and my 11-year-old son and I love the show. You have said in the past that you don't have anyone to display Hunter with on your shelves. In a dream world, if the main cast was made in TVC, how would you display them? A battle scene, at attention, or with other clones? And who else would you display them with? If there was an Imperial Crosshair figure, I'd love to do a diorama of the episode Camino Lost, where Tipoka City is sinking with the batch on board. That would be a hell of a diorama, my friend. So yeah, I think first and foremost, we, we need the main cast, don't we? we? We need the rest of the actual bad batch. And when I say that I don't have anyone to display Hunter with, that's exactly what I mean. He comes as a squad, a squad of characters, and we have one of them. So first and foremost, to display that character, I need the rest of the, the squad. In terms of what I would probably do, yeah, I'd probably just maybe have them in like fighting poses basically with some clones around or something i wouldn't really do too much with it really i don't you know we don't have a play set or anything to go with those necessarily so that's probably what i i would do with that but you know as i say first and foremost we need the rest of the crew channel member reckless deck says hi tim question for next week there's a lot of talk about re-releasing updated versions of older figures what i'd ideally like to see are all new updated versions of the three mains from empire strikes back I think it's the OT movie that gets the least amount of love from TVC, which is weird because it's almost universally considered to be the best film of the three. Hoth Leia and Bezbin Han and Luke are my all-time favourite looks for all three characters. Their figures came out early in TVC 1.0 and look really rough compared to modern figures. How far off do you think we are getting from Empire's three mains looking as good as the Cloud City Lando figure. Uh, to be honest, I think we are a little way away from those personally. As you say, we do already have them in TVC 1.0 and I'm, I'm in complete agreement with you, buddy, that those three figures aren't up to today's standards. They, they aren't good enough, but you know, we do have them currently. However, if you take, for example, the main characters from A New Hope, then those we don't have at all. Uh, so we definitely need those first. So, and I'm pretty sure that's Hasbro's thinking as well. The closer we get to another anniversary of Empire Strikes Back is when those may be considered again. I just can't see them thinking to themselves, oh, you know, I think we should redo Luke Skywalker in his Bespin outfit at this moment in time when there's so much other stuff to make when we already have that figure in the line. But you never know, you never know, man. Hopefully they will at some point. There's so many people out there that will disagree. You know, they're just like, no, 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 stop making figures that we've already got. We want all new figures of new figures, new characters, characters we've never had before. And I, I can agree with that as well. But sometimes when I look at the actual core main characters, and then as you say, you look at Lando, who's far and away a better figure than those three, then you want the others brought up to standard. Um, but yeah, I think we're a way off at the moment. Tony J says, great video as always. My question for next week. Curious to some of your thoughts about the recently announced Night Trooper pack and potential future issues. The issues with including Enoch have been discussed, but I wonder if future issues could help the army building of those troopers. I think an Ezra in Night Trooper disguise and a single carded Night Trooper that had different wrappings, colorings to the four pack versions would be a good idea. That would allow for people to mix and match parts for army building unique Night Troopers. What do you think and any other future Night Trooper related issues you would like to see? Thanks, Tony. Yeah, I've got to say, you know, first and foremost, I mean, I'm not a massive fan of the whole Night Trooper concept. These look like zombie, zombie Night Troopers or zombie troopers or whatever. They look pretty cool as figures, that, but they're just not my sort of number one sort of want in, in TVC. Ha having said that, um, Ezra in Night Trooper Disguise is the Ezra that I would like from that show. Um, I'm not really too bothered about him in his sort of nomad outfit, as it were. Um, I think, you know, that figure would look great as a, as, a, as a Night Trooper Disguise. And then, yeah, absolutely, you could probably head swap that one then, couldn't you? With, a, with one of the other heads from that four pack to make a fourth or fifth. I think with the Enoch figure that's included, you could maybe cut off his um, Karma and swap the head out on that one as well and maybe use that figure i think people have suggested that as well uh, but yeah i think it would be helpful to get ezra out 
in Night Trooper disguise on a single card and then just a standard Night Trooper. And then of course for everyone that just doesn't want the four packs loose figures, Enoch, Captain Enoch needed to be on a card. I think that might happen. Commander Cody says, sorry, but this is the third time I'm asking. Question for next week. Have you ever noticed that on VC-205, Empire Strikes Back Lando, that his legs crack if you move them too much? Do you think that this is a quality control issue or just my copy? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I do apologize if it is the third time that you're asking the question, but we're getting to it now. Um, my Lando is fine. I've never had a problem with him, and I've opened maybe two of those Landos, I think. I've got one in my... Um, carbon freezing chamber and then I have him somewhere else as well and I've never experienced that and I don't think I've ever seen anybody else experience that people can let us know in the comments if they have had that problem but it sounds to me like it it may be a one-off on on your example flying Ryan PK says hey BB love watching your videos every Sunday question for next week I can imagine some collectors are a bit tired of all the Mandalorian figures coming out recently as a Mandalorian focus collector myself I'm enjoying it quite a bit what are the chances they continue to use the pre-existing mold for the Mandalorians to do more realistic Clone Wars and Rebels figures? I can imagine it wouldn't be too hard to just switch up the paint apps, even if they don't do a sculpted face, so they can give us characters like uh, Ursa Wren and Gar Saxon, Tiber Saxon, Tiber Saxon, Fen Rao, Almec, and just different variations of Death Watch and Maldalorian figures, to name a few. They already do something similar with clone troopers. I understand they do that because people will army build, but just curious to your insight. I think there's a few in there that I, I could see them eventually doing. I, I, I do feel that maybe people are a little bit Mandalorian out at the moment, but I think Gar Saxon and Fen Rao have big enough parts to warrant figures, uh, especially as we've got lots of the others that sort of surround them. So yeah, I you know, as I say, those two for me it would be the ones that I would, I would personally want, and I feel would be the most likely that they would do. And another question about Mandalorians, it's from Dorfid. Hey boss, question for next week. There have been some talk of people being sick of all the Mandalorians. I think being sick of the repack slight changes to Dinjarin is completely understandable. The question is, well, are you sick of it, or is it important to finish the last six or so characters from the Siege of Mandalore? and more from the TV show. We really need Gideon and his troopers, in my opinion. So first of all, I don't think we need to worry about Gideon and his troopers. I think the Black Series just had um, the trooper pipeline and the Black Series helmet. There's a Gideon helmet. I think we're gonna be getting those in TVC at some point. I, I just cannot see Hasbro not doing those. The the troopers will sell like absolute hotcakes. They, they will, so many of those will be bought up. People want to army build those for sure, and and Gideon in that Beskar armor, they're going to want they're going to want him, and he's you know the main guy basically. So I can't see them not doing those. In terms of the other characters from the Siege of Mandalore, yeah, this is it, isn't it? It's like the standard sort of repainted Mandalorian. Am I sick of it? It, it depends. You know, if they gave me a Gar Saxon, then I would really enjoy that. I think that's a good release. The Mandalorian Judge not so much i mean to me that's just a bit lame in my opinion i would have preferred it had they just given us a four pack of those uh, mandalorians that are on the beach all different colored ones or whatever rather than having a card back of the mandalorian judge i just don't think that was necessary for a, a mainline release just didn't fit with me but so in some ways i'm sick of it and in other ways i would still take them all day long if they released them but it it depends on the character. Okay, so before we go, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that has watched my review of the Deluxe Django Fett. If you haven't watched that video, it is on the channel right now. I will leave a link up there in a card and I'll also leave it on the end card so you can check it out if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone that posted a question. Don't forget, if you want your question answered next week, leave it in the comment section of this video. I want to thank my Patreon supporters and channel members once again for supporting the channel in the way that you do. It really is appreciated. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we shall see you on the next one.